Well, hello there, listener. Fancy seeing you here. It's New Meta, episode 28. I'm your host, Dan, otherwise known as The Magic Tea. Joining me, it's the same old bunch, the tragic trio, or maybe the tremendous trio, uh, Marco and Adam. Marco, welcome back to episode 28. Oof. Yo, late 20s, climbing. <laughs> yeah. Good to be here. Soon for a midlife crisis, maybe, or maybe we've got about 15 <laughs> episodes and then... Midlife new meta crisis. It's too about real. To too real. <laughs> That's funny, yeah. that. Potential with that episode. Maybe. I don't know. We'll People see. like episode 30, it loads up and it's like, we're talking League of Legends or something. <laughs> that would be a, that would be a midlife breakdown. That, that would be, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, welcome. Adam, likewise, welcome to Ep28. Hopefully the 28-year-old slash midlife jokes didn't hit too hard, sorry. I was about to say, was, that's what I said, too real. This is my uh, age, this is my age episode, so here we go. Yeah. That's the way they put it when they get the, this is my age, full stop. Yeah, I don't know how else to put it, yeah. Like we were, that went by so fast, just like my life has, yikes. Yeah, well... Just like your life, New Meta has plenty more to go. <laughs> um, PMA, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And Dota, well, Ice Frog look, certainly looks like he's got plenty more to go. He's churning out patches quickly now after we seemed like we waited for 7.22 for an eternity. And suddenly, if you blink your eyes and it's 7.22C, that was released this morning, or at least this morning for me. Um, we'll be taking a gander through those largely minor but all the changes basically and then i imagine going through those will naturally talk a bit about the meta and where it's at and just general dota at the moment sort of chat which is what this episode will largely be about before we do that i think it's about time for the how have your games been chat uh adam i'll start with you how have your games been a uh, big, big game last night. Oh, Got yeah. my first ever win on Mars. So wow. that's delayed. Yep, it took three tries. Uh, one, I've won it on every hero again, so it's nice to have that back. But <laughs> I don't know. I channeled my inner Marco. So played a little bit of four position Mars. Oh, ah. crit, crit style. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, I know you've been Seems you've strong. been whipping Seems out really the funky strong. fours. I've seen you the famous Adam Quop. I was lucky enough to get a bit of action in a party game. The Quop four, yeah. The, the Zeus Quop. four, yeah. Not all sorts. The Quop four was a funny one because you actually had to leave to tend to some uh, students or whatever, and we had, you had to give us control. And we ended up winning the game <laughs> with four players basically. That was a fun one. Yeah, I had to give hero control. It was um, like, so we had a bunch of interns move into the school over, yeah, over the weekend, and I hadn't got really the I didn't really get the play because it's like, you You're know, like, cool can't, can't sit down with the game. Yeah, if someone shows up, uh, yeah. and then I have to leave. So then, nine out of the ten interns have moved in and i knew the nut no the next one was coming in like an hour and a half so like i have time to fit in the game now and of course <laughs> they show up 35 minutes early in the <laughs> middle of this game I'm like what is going on <laughs> <laughs> yeah wow we'd already a taken a lane though so we were okay couple things to say first of all i love the just the dota junkie lifestyle <laughs> oh, I, think, I think i've got i think i've got an hour and a half here load yeah. up dota 2 get the get the queue guy and also you've got to be careful how much you channel you're in a marco i i hope it was just enough to get a victory on mars and not too much that you start doing any other weird taco stuff no buybacks yeah no. dangerous game you're playing yeah no, I do like the hero as a four. It felt really good, so I might I might be playing that a lot, I think. Yeah, it's an interesting one. And like you say, Crit's, Crit's the only one I've seen do it, and it's, it looked pretty cool. I mean, Spear's I a good spell, whether you're four or whatever. Yeah, I hit six, and then I TP'd uh, to the bottom lane to try and make something happen because they were, like, diving. I throw right. out my ult, 
and then I had no mana. I'm like, this sucks so hard. <laughs> They're just looking at you. Yeah, I have 300, 360 mana pool and like use 75 of it, the TP, use 200 of it for the arena, do, do not have enough mana for the spear or the rebuke. And I'm just <laughs> like, I just cast a 200 mana kinetic field on a really long cooldown. They just like die. I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, uh, Marco, I would ask you how your games have been going, but I know you, you've been out of action a little bit, right? Games have been a bit barren, yeah. What? So yeah, not really playing. If you're interested, I could talk about some stuff I've been watching. Um, I think that's always quite interesting. Yeah, go on uh, Permission granted. Watched then Miracle Anti-Mage mid, and so... Always a... Miracle AM is always yeah, a treat. Such a classic as well. And it is a treat. And it, it, made, it made me think, why am I not running this more often? Mid's fun, anti mage is fun. you just got the perfect combination. So, it, but yeah, I've watched quite... If I ever watch anti mage games, it's typically always Miracle. And he is a beast on that hero. That's super fun. Uh, the most fun thing I did watch, and maybe other people did, was the Twitch Rivals. And the reverse captains mode games that they played. Did anyone else watch that? Yeah, because yes, that's cool yeah. to talk about from a meta viewpoint, and it's really quirky. Hmm. I mean, reverse captains mode is great. I mean, you watched it from whose perspective? Oh, so I watched Bulldogs videos. Did Gork do some yeah. as well? Is that I've well, seen he lost in the first round, but see, I saw Gork. I saw one game, so they played three, Gork's team. He he was on the same team as Sindarin, and I watched game one from Gork's perspective and game two and three from Sindarin's perspective. All VODs, like YouTube VODs, they yeah. watch it live. Um, but yeah, their I'm, team lost to Bulldog and then won their other two games. I'm sure Gork and Sin's team was pretty stacked as well. I know they're all fairly bit, but... They had Zayori. It was a fun team, actually. And then they had yeah. a couple of guys I didn't know, I didn't recognize. Maybe it wasn't too stacked then. Maybe they had Iceberg. No, that was a different team. Was that another team? But anyway, it was really yeah. cool because, yeah, there was all these high-caliber players mixed in with some personalities. And then... So, I mean, did you watch any of Bulldog's perspective? Or his stream highlights, whatever? No. I, don't think I so. watched both both videos, both parts of his 5-0 oh, well, yeah, so run. It was basically him and BSJ were the big masterminds. And they... Well, like, BSJ. Honestly, yeah, it was so watch. funny, BSJ, because they were these like dual masterminds, but then Bulldog would always get the respect from BSJ because Bulldog was drafted and he did some really good drafts and they were really smart about the meta picks and they eventually defined what this reverse captain's mode meta was like first phase, um, anti mage, and specs, super spec, common. Spec void. There's a lot of void. Void was really common one. And then hero, they were getting given jug and BSG is like, oh man, this hero is actually sick in. Yeah, because you got spin, yeah, and, spin so and healing ward. Yeah, yeah, I think you can just max healing ward and you're adding loads of value. And it's just interesting seeing the play styles as well. So I know Bulldog's videos, it's just highlights rather than full games, but it's all about, because I mean, there's 10 anti heroes in the game or something, and it's just farming for the first 10 minutes, but then there be games where they identify how the draft should be played optimally and it's really interesting to hear them discuss what the optimum power spikes are and or like hero timings item timings and it's really fun because it's these hero lineups you will never ever ever see unless you're in herald or something like five agi strat like there was one game where they got given luna dro which was a blunder from the other team because then they literally balled up at 10 minutes level 7, uh, level 4 Luna Blessing or whatever it is, and just mowed towers down. It was stuff like that. It was really cool. Yeah, it was really they, But they just kept getting given Medusa, and they were like, this that was is another strong one. This is like the best hero in the mode because everybody is picking really bad, like, early game ganking heroes. So Luna gets, fr or uh, Medusa gets free farm for the entire game, and then yeah. just shows up at like 25 minutes, six slotted. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the meta is that you will not get given and the enemy will not have heroes that can put pressure on you because you'll always give them some void am slark slark heroes that are just agi farmers that aren't gonna win lanes or cast spells so then yeah you get someone like deuce and it's just gg it's just give them i think the meta i mean i didn't watch bulldog's perspective i watched cinder and a little bit of gork and it's there's the same thing like them trying to figure out 
the meta over time is really interesting. And then like reflecting because they played the bulldog, they played the bulldog stack in the first game, and they give, give them Medusa, and then at the end they're like, that was, that was actually really dumb. Yeah. And then they also realized that Slark's not actually that bad just because yeah, Pounce Slark's is like really good. Slark, so oh. Pounce is okay. Like it's, it's just trying to give heroes that have really bad spells, basically. Well, Slark was good just against like he just got free lanes too because there wasn't any um, way to punish him. Also, he was really good at just hitting the big dumb strength heroes that they would give the other team. Yeah, there'd be lots but, of melee heroes picked. Yeah, lots of like mm-hmm. life stealer and PA. Uh, was a common hmm. like yeah. they ran a life stealer five i think and a sniper five am five it was funny seeing what it had to end up being a five yeah yeah and yeah. it's funny but... that they got bsj on slot because he was like wait this is my iconic hero and i keep getting given it in these drafts so it's like yeah fair enough puts bsj in his signature yeah some of the teams were clueless i mean the bulldog stack obviously they won so they weren't clueless. And then the Sind Gork strat were actually like tryharding a bit and weren't clueless. Some of the other stacks, yeah. like there was an Aloha, Dan- Aloha Dance stack and like the Iceberg stack. They just had no idea what they were doing. Like in the second game, they give Gork Morphling and Gork's just like, what the fuck? What? Like, what are you doing? Right? Like, this game is just, well, it's so funny because um, they're discussing who's going to play who at the end. And Gork keeps like trying to say, because Cinderin's basically the captain. Yeah. Um, and Gork keeps trying to butt in and be like, can I pl- play Morphling? Just like, and then there's, Sin's like, oh, maybe we put the Void. Definitely, I want to play Void support, but maybe this other person takes Morph and Gork, you do the, the Slark. And then Gork's yeah. just like, no. Right. And he just, he just picks Morph and he's like, this game's over. And it's like, okay, fine. It was yeah, I don't know why you'd give Morph. It's so crazy. That is silly. But seeing Bulldog and BSJ in particular master the meta really quickly and faster than the other teams, and that's largely why they do win every game. Yeah. was pretty cool like I mean Bulldog was like got or sinned flaming me for doing preparation and he was like oh I just spent 10 minutes doing this tier of like tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 heroes of like the most trash to the lesser trash um, that's also well at the end of the first game in the cork stack realized that that you get three grand like per per win. Yeah, yeah. So then they're like, "What the fuck?" Like then they start like, "Sin, why are you not? Why didn't you prepare?" Like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, decent it's incentives to play. It's funny contrasting you- it to um the reverse CM mode we did once, where we gave everyone we probably did the worst thing possible, where we gave everyone spell casting support. So yeah, one team spells. had five interiors or something, and it's like it couldn't be more different to what these guys were drafting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to ask if you guys saw the clip uh, from that tournament where I guess Mason's stack gave the other team, I think it was the Aloha Dancer, like the Phonic stack, gave them five supports. And the five support team just like rolled them over and Mason got like triple Meteor Hammered, just wow. stun locked because everybody on the other team built Meteor Hammer and just pushed. That was the wow. only way that in- supports That's, could yeah. push, but it's just like... Yeah, they, you know, obviously the int supports roll the early game and mid game, yeah. and but usually they just stall out and can't push. Well, everybody just built meteor hammer and just like yeah. knocked out all the buildings. Sure. Does it's meteor hammer stack? Uh, no, no. The debuff like, oh, it doesn't. So you just have to chain it. You just chain it, and it would refresh in, the debuff though. Right. As in, I right. mean the DPS. Like if you do three meme hammers on. A, on like a building will they get will they do would it do three times the dps i don't think so okay i think it's a okay. just a single debuff but they like just chain stunned i yeah, think it was yeah. mason am he just got triple <laughs> that must be such a satisfying kill yeah so i've got interesting story of how my games have been generally good i just played a game a centaur game that i lost very in very frustrating fashion it's actually kind of interesting because uh I load into a game. This isn't the Centaur game. Bef- this is the game before. Um, I mark mid because I've been trying to play mid again. This other guy marks mid. Uh, marks Ember and is on mic like, I am Smurf. Look at my profile. Look at my Twitch. Like all this. Like give me mid, give me mid, give me mid. And I'm like, I was like, oh, I'm going to roll for mid anyway because he can play another role if I win. Like I don't really care. And then he just first picks Ember Spirit. So I'm like, okay, fine. I'll go do something else. So I'm preparing to play like position four or something. Anyway, the game loads 
uh, we actually have a really good draft. Oh yeah, that was it. I, I was going to play Spectre. We had a really good draft, and I was like, man, this t- this is going to be so easy because we've got a Smurf on our team as well. Which like I'll report him after the game, but plus twenty five is plus twenty five anyway. So then the game starts. Other team, one of the guys on the other team just abandons straight away. So I'm like, oh fuck's sake. I guess a dodge or whatever. So the game doesn't count. Everyone leaves. I'm like, first of all, I'm feel robbed of twenty five MMR. Second of all. <laughs> There's no post screen, so I can't even report the Smurf. Like, I can't even report the Ember guy. Because I don't like boosters. Like, I usually try and report them anyway. So that was like another negative. What was the third negative again? I can't remember. At the time when I was thinking about it, there was three negatives. But now there's only <laughs> two. Yeah. So I, I wait, like, a, th- a few minutes because I don't want to get the same person. And then I queue again. And I get the same person on my team again. Mark's mid, first pick's Ember, whatever. I pick Centaur off lane. Anyway, I'm like, right, I'm going to rank double down on this game because I have one and this guy's a Smurf and on his profile, it's just full of MVP Ember Spirit performances. So I'm like, fine. So I'm going to double down. And then basically I clicked at the double down and it's like, are you sure you want to double down? Yes, announce it. Yes, no. I click yes, but just before I click yes, it expires, like the timing expires for it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. The wagering rank double down just pops away. But I wasn't... It was such a close time and I wasn't sure if it, if I'd clicked it or not. Anyway, we ended up losing the game in... Basically, we had an anti-mage on our team that ended 6, 10, and 8. So he somehow managed to die 8 times on AM, which is extremely questionable. The Ember did a lot of work, but he got countered in the lane by Monkey King. Um, so he kind of didn't snowball like he probably usually does i suppose um just because he got so hard counted in the lane and then our am was just really really bad and they had like a pango and a, a monkey king and a warlock and it was one of those games i mean marco you play more am but it was one of those am games where he's just getting disarmed or locked down and he just you need a BKB, like it feels bad to buy a BKB on AM, but this is like one of those instances. Anyway, yeah. we end up losing. Um, BKB on AM is an interesting conversation, but yeah, this is. I don't usually like it, but as in, I usually think you don't need it if you play the Kiro right. But this game was like he just needed it. Yeah, maybe if he was a better AM, he wouldn't have. But this guy just. He couldn't do anything, but he had he had MKB, Butterfly, Abyssal, Manta, uh, Battle Fury. It's like you do enough damage. We basically all we need you to do is kill Survive Warlock, well. just kill Warlock at the start of a fight, or like which you should be able to do. But he would just get like gone on. And it's like you just need BKB, or else you're going to get Abyssal by this Monkey King or whatever. Anyway, so we lose, and I check my MMR after the game, and I only lost twenty. So Oof, that's, that's a pog. So unless I was meant to lose 10 and double down, I'm pretty sure yeah. the double down didn't go through, which is a pretty decent relief on my part. So yeah, the that's... Comment, go ahead, yeah. The comment I would have to that is that your initial double down, or even that double down, sounds like a wiser double down than my latest <laughs> double down, which is quite a funny one. Right, the gonna the gonna morph, the gonna yeah. morph. Yeah, Do, have we said that on the pod? Oh, I think I, I mentioned I'm it in a pod sure. you weren't here for. Fair, yeah. But yeah, that was a bit. That was questionable. But yeah, on the whole, my game's been going very well. Uh, I've been playing more like normal. Yeah, you're getting your mojo heroes, like Lena and TA. I even won with Meepo, which is good because I've been failing with Meepo for ages. Anyway. Yeah. That, Maybe, um, you, I know you've said you've been playing normal heroes, and you have. If you'd played spec that game that got abandoned, that would have been not a normal hero. Oh, I yeah. How that well, would have gone. Yeah, I couldn't go mid because this guy first picked Ember Spirit. And there was a, I played two Shadow Shamans today. So there you go. One is a five, one is a four, because that's when I lost rolls for mid. Anyway. Also, shout out to Loot Monkey for doing a Battle Cup with me on Saturday as well, which is one of the most bizarre Battle Cup experiences ever with me, Loot Monkey, and three randoms that were, I think, drunk or high or both. (laughs) 
Um, Drunk and high at the same time? Quite possibly. I mean, high I on know. Dota. I mean, yeah. Not because they were particularly bad, but just the mic communication was just laughable. <laughs> they were like, scre- they would just, they would like sing voice lines. We'd win a fight and they'd just be like, ding, 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 motherfucker. We like, just like, start singing. It's like so weird. Like, what is going on? Anyway. So, 7.22c, Where, how do we want to tackle this? Do we want to just go, do we want to just jump to things that stand out about the patch? I'm, I'm willing to open the floor for someone to take me anywhere. I think we can just skim through and then we just stick on the ones where it's a more substantial change because, like you say, there are a lot of minor ones, but I think there are a few. There's not, yeah. yeah. Uh, There's a few ones, yeah. Slightly more significant. And some that are so minor that you don't need, we won't need to discuss. So it's not like we're going to drag out the pod by going through it line by line anyway. I so, have a comment about the second line. The second line being axe base, base movement speed increase men. Yeah, that's quite a lot. I, that is quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah, that is movement He's speed a matters car. a lot. It, what is it now? Do we know what's his base? I don't know. So I'm going to look it up that. now. But the point I was going to make is, is I saw Crit play it in a Battle Cup. Was it like 315 or something? 305. So I guess he was oh, slow still before. A bit crap. Okay. It's 305 now? Yeah. After 10? Damn. Yeah. That well, seems quite hard. he already got bonus move speed off Battle Hunger, so now you're not going to mm. be able to run away from him ever. <laughs> yeah, movement speed changes are pretty big. The only reason Lifesteal was an Ursa became relevant was because they had the movement speed to enable their kit. Same with Axe. If you can now run down people better, makes him definitely more relevant. Hmm. Marco Axe was famously a hero that you regarded as just pure trash. Oh my god, yeah. So this is me trying to lift him out of the trash can slightly. <laughs> I think sit- this is a hero that, I- for pub Dota, he is still situationally game-breakingly good versus the right uh, lineup. Um... I mean, I played a game today where we, it was just the Dream Axe game, and then the Dream Axe game was born out. Why was uh, it I wasn't... the Dream Axe game? Well, I know for a start, we were against a... Here it is. So we are against a Storm Spirit, a Morphling, and an Io. So it's these heroes are kind of hard to kill, and just Axe calls them at any point, and they just die. And it's just... You basically have a kill condition on their three most important heroes, Storm, Morph, and Io. And if if Axe can have a decent lane, which he he could in this game, uh, up against Morph uh, Lion, I think. Yeah, Morph Lion, which was fine for him. He could even cut creep and stuff. Then Plink calls to a wildly good spell. But, I mean, what you've... I don't know what you would say against Axe, but I know one thing that you've said to me in the past is that this hero is literally just a Blink call. That's all he is. But sometimes that's enough. Like in this game, that was enough to just destroy them. But yeah, yeah. It, I I would say that. So maybe now his early game should be improved. Movement speed buff really helps early game. Yeah, he's primarily this blink call function, but I think he needs to be more than that to be relevant. Maybe say a pos four x can serve just that function and it's fine. But I think say he played in position three, I think he does need to get big items beefy items yeah i was thinking about position 4x in my head just give him a uh a stout shield and a orb of venom battle hunger somebody at the rune and just chase yeah. them down i don't win, think they can get away win lanes with that idea for sure like in, if i think about the last game i played with axe and he's this position three hero that's meant to be initiating or making space he felt really immobile and ineffective because he was so reliant on a blink call. And I mean, maybe mm. he's more effective at low MMRs, but like he was getting one man blink, blink call at best and then just outmaneuvered by more mobile enemy heroes. He seems exactly what you want for a four. Like, it's okay if your blink call is from your four, right? Because you still have a three yep. to follow up. Just let somebody, let this four greedily, you know, farm up a blink and then you have really nice initiation or counter initiation and have like the 
bigger spells on your on your three because he does yeah, feel yeah. very he's a type of hero where like if you don't have a good laning stage you're never gonna be relevant that's like, what i think scary ever. rats as a three yeah i never really agree with the, the idea of playing him as a four and also a key aspect of your typical four position is you win lanes and you can make rotations or even if you don't make rotations you just you're meant to win a lane so when i think about this crit I, it was in a battle cup, K, okay, not super proper, but he was running in a tri lane, I think, and I mean, he just run at the enemy, whatever the enemy heroes were with battle hunger. Maybe there was an orb of venom involved. I'm not certain, but I mean, he's a beefy hero, just like hitting people's face. They can't really, you can't really trade with the guy. Run them down, battle hunger. You can win lanes, and if you do that, that's halfway to being a good four. And then, like Adam says, those points. Pretty interesting idea. Maybe I'll try this Axe 4 the same way I said I was going to try Legion 5. <laughs> Maybe I'll try Axe 4 tonight in RD2L without ever try practicing it. Just do yeah. it. Just do it, lol. Just yeah. Bust out the 4 Quap or 4 Mars. No, I another play part is, yeah, another thing that I like on Axe 4 is that just with uh, whatever it's called is spin. If you ever do get find yourself with a time to farm like he's got more farming potential he's got a farming yeah. potential spell which is quite yeah nice. he can actually just take stacks yeah, and take yeah jungle camps and so he's not really actually taking anything from anywhere else it's just being greedy so yeah definitely. yeah this, like all these points really make him a, appear to be a decent four he's got the skill set he's very much a lane heavy four like you're not leaving the lane if you're playing axe four that you is true so that's the downside of him if you compare him to other fours like he's a bit like a undying i mean undying's yeah. a five but in the sense of like you're not ganking mid like running at them with <laughs> with a w yeah. compared to some other fours that have like a range stun or something yeah yeah and like some i can imagine some one positions aren't going to care at all if your axe is a four just doing anything to them but other ones are just going to be completely destroyed by it so mm. kind of lane dependent like when I played the four co-op against the Morphling, it was just terrible because it didn't do anything. Because Morphling just, you know, makes some strength and he's fine. Doesn't take any shirts. damage from uh, from the dagger. And I think mm -hmm. Axe would be in the same mold with Battle Hunger. But if he's against, like, I don't know, I don't, it's not very good for a life stealer or like a, a melee carry to come up into the wave, right? And then you mm -hmm. just run at them. Yeah, Even like the, a um... span or something. But even like the, a Luna. the support heroes, he doesn't even need to bully and punch the farmer. He can beat down an enemy support. Yeah, I think he beats down that. any any he enemy support range. and he wins. Yeah. They might oh I'll right click you once from afar, but then he's suddenly on top of you. You've got like all the venom battle hunger, you'll never get away. Yeah. One one thing also about Axe 4 that I think would be less good downside is that it would definitely still function the same way as axe three in the sense that if you just get if you just lose the lane this hero's like would feel shit as a four if your blink's just super delayed it's like earthshaker yeah. that blink timing's so critical but then uh, it would be the same as axe than an earthshaker which is yeah that's definitely it's true yeah but you don't really want to be you don't really want to be falling back like into a jungle trying to find a blink no position four on the map sort of thing 15 to yeah. 20 minutes so i don't know but yeah it's one to try it's that, an that, interesting one yeah it's definitely one to try and base move speed always helps uh flaming lasso cooldown increased basically the same at level one but now it's 10 seconds longer at level two and 20 seconds longer at level three uh, 80 seconds instead of 60 that's a long time to not have flaming lasso up 20 seconds yeah that is long I feel 33% like, longer. yeah, it's quite a sizable nerf, really. It's not insignificant. Twenty definitely, seconds longer yeah. to wait for your bit, you wait for your alternate spell. That could definitely put top tier teams turning away from him a little. Yeah, I agree. That's the kind of thing that at the top level makes a big difference. It's such an important spell. Yeah, I was gonna say it's uh it's getting closer to the TI, so that's when Batrider nerfs come, and then he's still gonna get yeah. picked, and it's just like yeah. actually Lasso is just at, is completely unbalanceable with like the rest of his kit. It's just so good. 
Yeah. That yeah. no matter what you do to Batrider, he's still got lasso. So it's... Yeah, now what's gonna happen is Ice Frog's gonna do a, a change that says Batrider's level twenty five talent now grants Firefly flying movement or something. That'll be like the <laughs> 7.6 change that we finally see him not picked yeah I mean Batrider I feel like the last two TIs has come out of nowhere he's still he's actually quite reasonably meta at the moment but I certainly feel at TI7 and TI8 he just wasn't good and then suddenly by the end he was picked <laughs> I, yeah. I see quite a lot of 4 and 5 Batrider picks yep. in clubs often by like these high ranked players that know what to do and it often seems super strong if the enemy doesn't have sufficient uh, account heroes like an oracle or a jug or life stealer or something mm. he's one of those heroes that in the right laning situation is just a free win even in mid, terms yeah, of the lane. You can play him against so it yeah. doesn't yeah it doesn't matter what position you are if if you're in a lane and you know we're against these two heroes say and i'm playing five i'll just pick bat rider and destroy them i don't know yeah. if you would I don't know when you see these bat riders. Are they sort of picked early, or are they sort of response picks? Off, I, I mean, I think both. I've definitely seen it early, early position yeah. four. I'm going to play it like position four and just win lanes. And but then, like you say, it can be a great counter as well. I've seen bat mid against TA. You just get solo kills, even against mm. shadow fiends. Like the hero can be played two, three, four, five, which is pretty incredible. Yeah, he's a very yeah. strong laner. Bloodseeker, armor increased by one. Memes, Bristleback, base damage increased by three. Uh, feel free to stop me at any point. I mean, yeah, we spent a lot of time on the first two, so I don't mind you whittling yeah. through a few. Ring of Bassy, you've skipped it. Oh, yeah, that one's made cool. An extra damage. <laughs> yeah, Someone on a damage. Reddit comment said, I often pick this up as a casual item on my position fives and made me think pretty decent point. 500 gold for eight damage to you and your partner in the lane, mana regen, armor. Not terrible. Yeah. 500 gold. Yeah, yep. not bad. It might be better to go Wraith Ban and Ring than double Wraith Ban yeah, and just not have them combine. Interesting, yeah. Feels bad. Rip. Rip <laughs> yeah, Rip Aquila. Moments of silence, yeah. CK, bolt re mana cost reduction from 140 uh, down. Now it's a bit lower at level 1s through 3. Uh, I think one... that's big because you leave it as a value point. So at least that's what I do when I play it. Yeah, I think so. You usually max the passive these days. I'm... Yeah, the passive and the rift because you want the lower cooldown. Right. So then yeah. you have... I mean, he's always he's a very mana hungry hero. So it's really mana hungry, yeah. Thirty less mana is really big. Yeah, it's not, I guess it's a nice change. Be cool to see CK back in. And say, I like him, but you feel like he hasn't been meta at the top of the game for such a long time. Yeah, it's funny because definitely you would never see him. I guess maybe his farming capability is not good enough. Because when you think about his I skill set, big stun, big. Gap closer, he's got an ultimate where he can one shot a lot of heroes, naturally very fat and difficult to kill. He's got a lot going for him, but yeah, you will never see him picked in the pro scene. But you will see Pubsy ruffle stomps. Yeah, he had that stint in the off lane when they first changed his passive. You saw a lot of position three CK, but then that True. fell away for some reason. I can't remember why that fell away. Some sort of I think it was a nerf to his they changed the way his passive works, basically, um, and then it stopped being played as much. He's just a little. Hero. His illusions are just a little too long of a cooldown and a little too, um, they're a little less tanky. It seems than other. I mean, there's times where you can pop that ult and then your illusions just blow up. You never actually get the reality rift someone mm. with them. Yeah. Yeah, maybe he's just too all in on his ult, big paying off. Yeah, but there it's are other very... times where you actually just one shot their carry, just easily so that's always a feels good <laughs> yeah he does live and die by that phantasm and like you say if you're ever in a position where the illusions are, can just be killed then the hero is super underwhelming you can just be kited forever because he doesn't do much damage until uh, you by get himself. that 25 talent get this six second stun what six second stun 
It's two like plus... second duration. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty silly, actually. Uh, what's the other one at twenty five? Uh, because I think something... the other one's actually better. But... Minus two chaos strike cooldown. Yeah. That seems pretty crazy good. Yeah. Half Jumping as much. Around fights. Mm. Yeah. Or that's the passive. So you're just like rocking oh. that over and over and over again. Two hundred sixty-five percent crit and 70% life steal two second cooldown it's quite good yeah but there I guess there's some times where you just you need to lock someone down for six seconds which is like you know <laughs> yeah pretty good the projectile is so weird now it's so slow it's like just trickles across the screen mm-hmm. but, um, we've written in the notes uh, what have we written in the notes where is it? Chen. I'm sure I saw it. Yeah, I'm looking for the Chen. Basically, like, who can be bothered with Chen? Yeah. Uh, oh, that's it. Does anyone or can anyone even tackle Chen? Question <laughs> mark. I mean, that was my first thought when I saw this. I was like, right when people started to figure out the old one, they got to change it all up over again. It's like the old Earth Spirit nurse, man. Yeah. I mean, I'm I don't definitely know what's a going few on. years behind on what Chen does these days. <laughs> I'm like, Chen was super OP, armies, so. Right? It is just like he had Coddle Ag's recall at level one. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. And he still does, but um they just swapped around all of his like abilities. Uh, yeah. I actually can't make a comment on this because I don't understand what this will change. I can't sort of I, I can't. okay. So used to be the vine favor was the aura and damage right to your creeps yep. and it was only to your creeps um not to like you know lichen wolves or right things like that but like your if you got a helm creep or like but a that, necro it, creep in it itself was a hot fix right i mean they hot fixed the fact that it didn't affect other things no it's supposed to only affect his units yeah but that was 7.22b wasn't it when they changed that i don't know yeah i'm just saying that's what it like, it was before. It's right, what right, it right. was before. And then his um and like so if you had a a troll summoner and it made skeletons, those skeletons got the damage buff too. Or like if you got a rock golem and it split into two golems, those two golems got the damage. Right. Uh and it was just a passive with like HP regen and then the damage buff, and then it was like two times as strong. The damage buff went to heroes, but the damage on your units was two times as strong. So, you know, like think 32 damage right, okay. instead of 16 on your creeps. But now they changed it to where the Divine Favor is just HP regen, aura, and then it has the recall on it of a hero with a 60 second right. cooldown. Okay. And now they put the bonus damage on the uh, the creep conversion yeah uh, so the biggest difference being the damage is no longer an aura but it's just to the converted creep that gets damage right so now so what you, you can do is you can OP split army. push with these creeps and they still have the damage bonus you don't have to be around them in the aura but that's all the spell does now is convert creeps it does not drag anybody to you and I guess maybe if you double tap yourself I haven't tried this actually because you you know Chen could recall. Nope, that's on divine favor. I guess because you know Jin, uh, Chen could recall his creeps to himself too. Um. So yeah. yeah, the aura thing that affected your creeps right when it was an aura. Yeah, but now mm-hmm. it's only your now it's just creeps. So the amount of damage. So it doesn't potential. even work on the skeletons. It doesn't work on the yeah. split. Um, Much the split less golems. Than... Yeah. And they also nerfed Penitence mana costs for some reason. Like, I, and that was like the third skill that you uh, max, which is actually a really good s- skill. But a pop quiz to the listeners would be: What does Penitence do? Well, there was a time when That's Penitence was maxed, and it was a really abusable. There was a Chen a few patches ago, or a few mini patches ago, not too long ago where you got a medallion and you max penitence and you didn't bother converting creeps ever and you just ran at people and that was a really abusable chen as well um, yeah penitence used to be the ma- the the spell you'd max it slows and gives bonus attack speed on target 
and it's really strong. Yeah, it's like a mini solar crest sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Apart from the fact that solar crest doesn't slow. Um, but then they nerfed to... his, his XP gain too, and his talent at ten. Yeah, and then they the fifteen talent that changes the divine favor damage to plus ten to t- plus twenty holy persuasion damage. That's like the same thing. Like that's no different. In terms of like the net right, to right. your to your creeps, um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. He, he's like, I, I, I don't know what you do with him now. I mean, the recall ability is really strong. So if you're able to abuse that, uh, he's probably still going to be picked. But otherwise, I don't. Basically, know. the only two people to have read Chen's spells are Adam and Sniff. Yeah. <laughs> Puppy, maybe. Across the entire Dota community. Yeah. Puppy wrote them. It's such a bummer that this does not provide damage to your teammates. This aura. But it's not an aura anymore. So maybe he really won't get picked as much. Because uh, that was like, it was really nice to give 26 damage to your to your team. Man, that creeps, that's a major push. Well, it was 52 to the creeps. So yeah, it was... Or, uh, yeah, 52. To, to your creeps because mm. it was doubled yeah rip chin I said no. that last time it ended up being OP so I'll say it again and maybe he <laughs> is still okay yeah uh, clickety clinks or clonkers as I prefer to call them not too much to talk about here I mean he chained they, they've changed his 10 talent to something that's actually relevant to clinks so it used to be armor or magic resistance, and now it's agility or strength. So usually, if you're having a good time, you're probably going to go agility, being an agile hero and all. Yeah. Because, I mean, Clinks used to skip the level 10 talent sometimes if you don't need armor or magic do. resist. Yeah, you, you reckon, hey, agile? Yeah. I think the extra points in the skeleton walk are really big. You get faster every time, I think. Right. Yeah. Be interesting to see, but it's at least a worthwhile talent now. Yeah, you don't just skip it the entire because the eight, you know, the eight Agi is actually used by the um skeletons at least for your old, so that's yeah. nice. And skeletons that you're going to be seeing 30 seconds earlier because they're giving them a 15 talent change from plus 15 strength to minus 30 second burning army cooldown that seems like a no brainer, right? Over Absolutely. uh, the buff to your. Oh, is it searing arrows? Yeah. Oh, maybe it's not a no-brainer then. Seems pretty good. Minus thirty seconds on your What's ult, the searing arrows one? It's a bike plus 15, fifteen damage, which is a really, really good as well. So I don't know. Maybe it's just maybe searing arrows damage is just too good. Fifteen or fifty? Fifteen. 15. Is that really that? I know like all your it's little been that It's here. been nerfed twice. It used to be thirty, I think. Maybe uh, <laughs> at one point. So if you could be using your ult more often quite tempting but he would change your ult from a 110 second cooldown to an 80 second cooldown so for what it's worth that's one to see i think i'm banning clinks at the moment in my pubs uh i haven't even lost to one yet usually that's reactionary usually everyone's bans are just reactionary to the last hero that stomped them but i'm preemptively banning clinks because i know at some point i'll be stomped by a clinks i had a I had yet to see a Clinks lose once they got Ags um, until I played Battle Cup with one of my team this weekend. And it was only because he got Ags at 56 minutes, like sixth item. like I, And that's just wrong. But right. uh, yeah, I don't know. I think he's like the really ultimate pub stomper right now. Yeah, yeah he's I scary. agree. He's always a pub stomper. Especially if you like, you either go medallion or defusal, and then I think you get eggs. And after that, it's I don't. It's I think it's impossible to deal with. It's um, so brutal that if you say your position one or two is caught, I even caught out of position, but on a where the, the vision's lacking, safest clinks, and then all of a sudden he pops his ult and he's and he's got eggs and medallions. You, I, he's one of the highest DPS outputters there is with just a few items and. You, you're dead in a blink, and then it's even even if he was caught or you see him, he's kind of a 
he's fast hero without the right heroes he can be really slippery it's pretty annoying especially when he has ags because he just breaks the move speed limit so he's oh god that's super song. fast so do you adam do you reckon i'm thinking first of all because i, I kind of want to get out on this clinks action just as I'm finding some success playing some old old school heroes that I have experience with, I want to push the boat out already. Is he mid then? I suppose. Um, he can seems be like, mid. I think, I think he's just one through three. Right. Yeah. And then diffuse all into ags or medallion into ags. You wouldn't want to go both. You think just one or the other, and then get the ags straight away. I just I don't think you get the ags third. I think you get the ags second. Um, right. His his laning is actually pretty bad. Um, like, even though they buffed the mana cost, you know, it's lesser mana cost on the Syrian arrows, they I mean they nerfed how much damage they do at every level, so he's nowhere near as, like, big of a bully or a dominator of a lane as he used to be. He doesn't really farm very fast either, because he has no, like, farming skill. Yeah, He just has to write, like, you know, auto-attack creeps. Yeah, and people should be aware that this guy's HP pool is very low, relatively. This guy should get pressured and bullied and spells thrown at him or make a man fight happen, and you will knock him down decently. Yeah. If you play yeah. passive against that guy, you're going to be bit, feel miserable because a passive lane is just going to pep every last hit and pep you with his orb. But if you can be more aggressive, the guy's going to struggle because he's Agreed. just yeah low HP pool. No escape. Yeah, yeah. Glass cannon, classic. But I think it's it's. Well, I'm just saying it's even more easy to pull off the glass cannon though with how fast he is. Like, especially with the ags, it's like so much easier to run in. Uh, you know, you po pop ghost walk or whatever. Run in, wait for it to come off cooldown. That's when you pop out and hit somebody, and then you go back in and pop out, and you have like four skeletons, and then you yeah. know you're kill someone and no one can come into you because you have four skeletons and then you can run away and you're just so fast. Um, yeah, he's like a glass laser now. Yeah, Long exactly. A, glass cannon. Yeah. a long range yeah. uh, tower. I don't know, turret. Mm. Glass artillery strike. Yeah, there you go. Clockwork. Quite a nice buff to clockwork cooldown especially at the lower levels from 32 to 24 at level one uh it's nice for clock in the lane i imagine eight seconds yeah it's quite significant makes him able to be way more active eight seconds it doesn't mm. sound much eight seconds but in a lane in phase i think that is significant i think it's huge yeah i've uh definitely had games where a support clockwork as solo won the game taking it over and then i've oh, had it where yeah. like they've completely been useless so taking um, over the game that's that's any game with guess next clock the famous nice day clock pog pog well there now he can walk up next to somebody every eight seconds sooner yeah dark seer understandable nurse this here is one of the S tier heroes. Surge reduced from 30, 45, 60, 70, basically 5% less move speed, effectively, when you use Surge. And the 20 talent, the, the iron shell damage, 20 talent, which is plus 100 iron shells, now 80. Not Nothing major. Probably still going to be really good, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, welcome change. Nothing major, but yeah. welcome. Nice, nice to see them try and do something that's not nerf vacuum. <laughs> yeah, very true. Yeah, feels wrong. Uh, Dark Willow, do we care about these changes? Some well, they've... they changed the base attack time on her before, but now right. they buffed her base attack speed. So I think that's good because she can harass a little bit more in lane. I mean, they nerfed her ags, and then like basically everything else about her kind of made it a lot worse to play support Willow. Because um, what was made her really good is that she was kind of like Oracle, who also got a base attack time nerf. It's just like your attack speed was so high, or your nice animation, you could just hit people like two times for every time they hit you once. Yeah, so, Oracle's animation so good. And that, then 
they're yeah, messing around with the shadow realm as well so it went from three seconds up to four seconds and now they put it back down to three and a half seconds so that will be fun to get used to because you know it had the three second audio cue and then they stretched it out i think to the four second they just took like i think it felt like they took the same audio file and just like stretched it so it didn't right, sound yeah. the same and now i don't know if they're going to compress it but I don't know, four seconds felt like a really long time to wait in Shadow Realm before mm. throwing that out, so. Yeah, that seems good. But Dazzle has an XP talent at 10 now. That's quite nice. That's a what probably welcome for Dazzle players out there. Usually these XP talents are highly sought after. 30 XP at 10 will be quite nice for the hero. I don't know for what the- supports. For supports. Because well, mid's, mid's always gonna go 75 damage at 10. For sure, hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, I st- well, actually, to be fair, I was gonna say, don't see much support, but actually, at, at the pro level, you probably see you you well, you do see more core dazzle than support dazzle because I feel like you never see support dazzle. See it in pubs though, still quite a bit. Yeah. Some DK tweaks, nothing too major. I think just more about DK is getting a little tweak and nudge, because yeah, there's all buff. Base in increased by three, very minor, but above. Level 10 talent, the fire reduction's better in terms of damage reduction. Level 15, HP talent's bigger. Honestly, I, don't, I think a pause free DK is cool just in terms of it being this dragon knight, dragon hero, tank frontliner, just cool. I played a one dragon knight and it felt insane. Like, just went Midas Maelstrom. Uh, BKB and then Ags and that timed up with level like 18 and then you just couldn't die after that. It was really absurd. Interesting. I think Dragon Knight in his Dragon Ult particularly level 2 and 3 and now you've got Black Dragon. He's one of the coolest characters to see in the game. I think it's really badass. That's why I'd be happy to see more of it. He's so strong in level 4 Dragon now. You attack from so far away. It's like you get 600 extra range, I think. And like Mm. 30 magic resistance on top of already having like 4k HP and a million armor. It feels like probably about 35 armor, I think. Raid Mm. boss. Yeah, it's actually you are just a raid boss. If they don't have break. It's just a World of Warcraft raid. And you're slowing in an AoE. Yeah. I think the problem with DK would remain that you, I feel like you have to last pick this hero or he's one of those that has quite a few unplayably bad lane matchups. Well, that's why I feel like you can play him in the side lane now. Even in the side lane though, you just get crushed unless you have a support that can just 1v2 against some heroes like a Monkey King or a Razor or something. You're just going to get destroyed. Yeah. That's my irk with DK. I feel like sometimes he can be really good, but I feel mostly as a last pick. Or actually can't just get wrecked by something weird. Even like Huskar just destroys him. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Elder Titan, Astral Spirit. Did I even... I think I just ignored that because one, it's minor. And two, it's Elder Titan, which is minor. Um, <laughs> it's kind of funny that Impetus had a range that was less than the normal attack range. Yeah, that's that so seems weird. so weird to me. Yeah, I did not realize that. But now it doesn't. There you go. Huskar, uh, Ice Frog making the game more accessible to all these new players that would be confused by a 25 attack range difference. Small Enigma nerf to his intelligence gain. Seems fine. Uh, and Faceless Void. So they've increased the Chronosphere radius by 25 from 425 to 450. They also increased Will O Wisp radius. From 675 to 700. So two tiny buffs to these big teamfight ultimates. I thought that was kind is of interesting that they decided is to Is the Chrono that. a buff or is it a nerf? Is there a, is there a range of MMR where it's a buff and a range where it's a nerf? <laughs> <laughs> it's a range where if Stan steals it, it's a nerf. <laughs> Stan is the watershed point. Yeah. I mean, I was going to say, more maybe MMR is one, but I think country in the UK is a nerf. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> UK yeah. chronosphere is notoriously bad. Yeah. Oh, if you're from weird. within the British Isles, don't pick Faceless Void. Um, or even worse, don't pick Rubik into Faceless Void. But um, yeah, I don't understand why. I guess because Void and Keeper of the Light are a bit bad. Yeah, it definitely them makes them a bit more relevant. I really like the fact that Cottle's ult's got bigger radius because it it just makes him better. And I think he's a really cool hero and his ult is really cool. But you don't see much of that hero. Chrono, uh, Void is a hero you'll never see. Uh, maybe this nudges it. Uh, I, st- I still don't think it's big enough nudge, but maybe, maybe position three? It's funny because I watched... It turned on a few random streams and I saw Wagger was playing a void and then I later I saw Kezi was playing a void. <laughs> so maybe this tiny, tiny change has nudged it back into some people's mind at least. Mm. But it's definitely not so significant that he's going to be picked in every pub. No, I agree. Huskar, life break slow increased from 40, 40 50, 60% to just 60%. So now it's a 60% slow at all levels seems nice I think Huskar's very good in pubs at the moment personally uh, he has a very high win rate and that's not a good sign for us minions of pub Dota uh, Adam I don't know if you have any thoughts on Huskar because I feel like he's pretty good at the moment for pubs anyway I don't uh, play him like at all yeah. But I mean that seems like a pretty good little buff. I mean it's not gonna like break the hero or anything. I feel like he has way larger glaring weaknesses that he didn't use to. Just the ma- the fact that you can just magic burst him now. Yeah. I mean it's the complete opposite of before. Now he's hard countered by the very heroes that he used to counter, <laughs> like the yeah. magic burst heroes. Um Yeah, now he out regions the physical damage, but if you can just burst through him super easy yeah he actually currently has the third highest win rate in divine slash immortal games that's surprising 56.9 percent this is on the global trends tab i don't know if dota buff would say something differently but this is the last eight weeks and i mean it's almost just silly at this point that visage and lycan are just always at the top both sitting at Visage and Lycan are both sitting at 59.5% win rate in Immortal slash Divine. That is crazy. Anyway, followed by Huskar, who's at 569 So I think in the right situation, this hero can be can do a lot of work. Whereas I think he, he, with these gradual buffs, um, I've put him in a pretty decent place, situationally in a decent place. Moving along, another meme chase to in- change to Invoker, literally unkillable, etc. Io, some. It's a lot. Changes, yeah. So I'll just run through them and then I'll let you talk about them. <laughs> so I get the I I give myself the easy job. Attack range reduced from five seven five to five hundred, so that's a seventy five reduction in attack range. Base armor increased by one. Presumably Ice Fog just threw that in there for a laugh. Strength <laughs> gain increased from 2.5 to 3. Tether regen reduced from 150 scaling... No. Tether regen reduced from 105 scaling to 150 to 90 scaling to 150. And Tether Council now has a 0.25 second cooldown to prevent accidental uses. Here's a one, an easy one to digest. Spirits no longer slow. And also... They've moved the slow to level 10. There's Rather than the 20 XP talent, now you get the spirit slow at level 10. So, I don't know if either of you want to digest any of those IO changes. It's a lot of nerfs. Yeah. A yeah. lot of nerfs. I mean, they gave him the armor and the strength because he has no attack range now, so he has to get up close to baby, even, like, trade. Right, right yeah. clicks with anybody. Uh... I mean, I guess he's just supposed to be a heal bot. I, I think that's and a and a relocate. I think that's all he's supposed to be because spirits, I feel like, are, are just useless now. Yeah, Maybe I guess I'd, you farm with them, but they don't slow an enemy. So uh, I guess yeah, they just pop for a minuscule amount of damage, and then now you're never gonna 
get to your levels because they took away his 20 XP gain talent. So, like, they didn't just move it around. They just got rid of it. So, yeah, really strong nerfs across the board. His early game is notably weaker with that attack range less and the tether regen. I mean, a level one tether is now 105% to 90% regen. So, I mean, his early game is much weaker. I think that ball thing, if you get hit by five balls to the face, you're basically <laughs> rooted for a second, given how much they that they used to just slow you to a, to a halt, basically. Mm, mm. That made massive differences in kill potential. Now that's no longer there. This, yeah, this, hero, this guy's early game kill potential really is lost. And then you worsen his mid-game progression because he doesn't get an XP gain talent. So really hurting this hero across quite a large portion of the game. Yeah, it's a funny one. I feel like it's not necessary, really. I mean, well, maybe maybe some nurse were necessary. He was first phase banned all the time at the last at ESL. But when he was picked, he lost all three games in the finals, so I don't know. Spirit's no longer slowing, seems like. Not necessary. Because it just, like Adam says, it just turns him into a pure heal bot. I mean, I personally don't like the fact that you can't toggle the spirits in and out. Just because I'm usually a fan of like skill cap things, even for heroes that I never touch, like Io. Um, maybe this is just a precursor for TI. Again, this hero always seems to just be broken at TI, so... Maybe he's just getting those nerfs in early, I don't know. Yeah, I think the consensus was that it's still a broken hero, and yeah, it's showing that ESL was weak, 0-3, but I think the consensus would still be, yeah, first phase ban the guy, it's too strong, Gaio's too good in the highest level. So yeah, mm. we just get the nerfs in ahead of time. Yep, hero's still trash in pubs though, so don't worry about it. Moving on, we already discussed the Keeper of the Light changes. Lich... Adam's one of Adam's favorite heroes. Basic intel increased by two. Gaze cooldown reduced a little bit. It's six seconds lower now at level four. Chain frost damage increase and 25 talent increase from 50% slow to 60% slow. Although I don't think that's the 25 talent that you take anyway. Now you get the heal. Yeah. Um, I mean, quite minor, I suppose. I'm never going to complain about two int. The guy has no int pool. You can't, like, and you can't sacrifice anything anymore. So it's really yeah. nice that you can yeah. cast some spells. And I like yeah. the uh, Sinister Gaze cooldown being lower at max because it's a really strong spell. Mm. That's a very high cooldown at the moment. You still, yeah. 24 is quite high for a level four spell like Gaze. Mm hmm. Um, some minor changes to Luna, Medusa, and Mirana. Morphling. Morphling. I like, I like yeah, the base uh, The base mana regen on Mirana is really nice. Yeah, point 0.4. Because the extra point 0.4, like, God forbid you ever play a roaming Mirana, but mana <laughs> issues was, like, one of the big things. And even just casting Starstorm used up a whole lot of mana. Like, you really mm. couldn't use it to farm if you ever wanted to have mana for a team fight as Marana, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's nice. Um, morph waveform cooldown increased from 17 up to 11 to 20 up to 11. Uh, so just a bit of a nerf to early points in waveform. I don't think it's that important though. Waveform mana cost increased a bit as well. Again, not particularly important. I'm kind of surprised that morph hasn't been tweaked down turn to tune down a bit i feel like the hero's really really strong um in the at the top level so i'm mildly surprised he didn't get touched up uh necro changes they basically have increased the regen that he gets per stack at low level so basically 1.5 higher regen per stack at level one um, and that but it's still the same at level four uh, and the mana regen per stacks increased by 0. 0.5 at each level so you can do a value point in it in the aura yeah and max your heal and not have yeah. to be destroyed by the fact that you have to put in a bunch of points into this useless heart sucker <laughs> spell yeah 
Yeah, that's a true point. I mean, I, Hero's still bad, right? Yeah. Isn't it win rate quite good? I don't know. It definitely got so. tanked um, by the heart supper changes, but it's still okay. I mean, his spells are... His ult's always really strong, but... Oof. 47% win rate. So it, it's he's one rank 100 in the win rates. This is at Divine slash Immortal. What did okay. it, like, tank 10% or something? Yeah, tanked 10% with the change to Heartstopper. Oh, that's yeah. crazy. That's pretty heavy. 10% change. Wow. His ban percentage went from 36% to 1.5%. <laughs> that's funny. And his pick rate went from... Wait, that can't be right. Pick percent 47.9. That can't be correct. Oh, I'm looking at Drow Ranger. <laughs> All right, forget, scratch that. Both of those statistics I just gave you are about Drow Ranger in terms oh, okay. of the, the change in ban. The, the win rate change is the same though. It's 10%. But yeah, his pick rate went from sixteen percent to five percent. I guess that's not that not that incredible versus the Drow Ranger change. Yeah, Drow was picked up in forty eight percent of games. That's crazy. Not anymore though. Um, Nyx Assassin. I know someone had something to say about Nyx. Yeah, I think this is one of the biggest nerfs under patch. One of the biggest changes. This is definitely a tier one hero. And now, base HP regen. 3.25 to 2.5 fairly significant she's a bit of a weaker laner now Ob still a strong laner but not as strong which is good because a 3.2 HP regen must be one of the best in the game now it's 2.5 cool now spiked carry pace duration is reduced from 2.25 to 2 to only 0.25 but when you think that in a team fight everyone could be hit by spiked carry pace everyone's now stunned that little bit less Definitely is a positive if you're playing against a hero. And I, I, like I said, I think this hero is tier one, so I don't mind seeing it get nerfed slightly. Wait, is that this the, way. the stun duration or the duration that you oh, have shit, it up sorry. when you pop You're right. It? Yeah, duration it's up. Still, yeah, okay, so you're not stunned less, but yeah, there's yeah, enough weight as long. It's shorter. Yeah, yeah. Definitely like a decent little nerf. Yeah. For sure. The quarter second makes a big difference. Yep. Phantom Lancer, juxtapose illusion damage increased from 16% to 18%. I didn't realize it was this low. I didn't realize the illusions did so little. I thought they'd do more, but I suppose the real illusions are... Oh no, that is the ult, right? Juxtaposes is ultimate, yep. right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can wow, that's crazy how low that is. True, yeah, you do have a lot. Oh, surprising to me. I thought it was. I thought it would be. If you'd said to me what percentage damage do his illusions do, I would have probably said thirty-five. I probably would have said forty, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, I don't play this here. Is this the change that gets me my jungle win on PL? <laughs> I don't think anything will get you that at this point. <laughs> You're cursed. The taco, uh, taco phantom lancer is cursed. I think. What do you make of this Phoenix Fire Spirits release cast point change from point zero one to zero? <laughs> I don't know. There's some sort of thing going on there. There must be a reason. Is the reason just that they don't want naught point naught one to be a number in Dota two? I don't. It's I don't know. A bit silly. I I don't know. Surely, if you went in the lobby and tested that, you wouldn't notice. So I don't know. Yeah, you wouldn't notice. Is it some kind of laggy kind of there's a cast point so there's some ah, who knows I I, th I personally think that it is literally just cleaning up the game code a bit what's the point of having point yeah. 0 0.01 when it could just be zero and they, so they just changed it because they can that's my thoughts yeah someone spotted this clunky number that doesn't yeah. need to be there uh, Park has 0.5 more base health regen and some changes to the level 25 talent dream core talent no longer requires enemies to be in attack range of puck as long as puck is within 200 range of the edge of the circle dream core talent attack interval reduced from every 0.6 seconds to every 0.7 um no one cares because hashtag 420 yeah oh man this uh, i think okay obviously 420 gpm is nearly always going to be picked up. However, this Dream Call talent change isn't 
totally trash can because now the effective attack range you could have on your puck when you dream calls and has his talent to I mean the dream coil radius is pretty big and you could be on the other side of that i.e 200 range within the edge of the circle and say hit someone on the opposite side of your dream coil so you could be pew pewing from quite far away we'll have to try it out that's for sure <laughs> yeah the, you'll the, have to try it out you'll have to try it out and we'll see you're gonna see suffer with because to... this is party game for absolute certain <laughs> Dragging the game out so you can get 25. Yeah. On a puck. Um, His old 10 talents got slight, the tiniest of buffs. That like HP mm-hmm. regains the tiniest of buffs. Welcome change for a hero that's in the, the trash can right now. Has been in the trash can for quite a while, it seems. Although he was he was picked up at ESL, wasn't he? Once. Because I played him. True, yeah. Months, and it was a bit underwhelming, yeah. Yeah, they got nailed. Sanking's the next change, and it's his. Maybe people will be surprised there wasn't bigger changes. So his strength game has been reduced ever so slightly, and his sandstorm mana cost has gone from 60 to 75, which really isn't that substantial. 15 more mana to use sandstorm isn't isn't hurting the hero too much. Maybe it works. It weakens his fall, and you've just got a tranquils and nothing else, but. At the end of the day, it's only 15 mana, so it's really not very tangible. And basically, this hero was one of the most contested heroes, definitely at ESL, and I think it's very popular these days as well, position three or four. So mm-hmm. I think, it'll, I mean, it will still be very relevant despite this patch. Mm. Shadow Shaman's had a bit of attack speed reduction. Doesn't really matter. The sky change is cool. Go, go on, run us through the sky change. So, concussive shot, his W, the one where you fire it and it hits and slows someone. Its damage now scales from rather than 70 to 280. It goes from 100 to 280, so it's better at levels 1, 2, 3. But at level 1, so it makes me think of Adam's theory crafted on ABBA. So at level 1 now, you're doing 100 damage rather than 70 on your concussive shot, which you can cast from quite far away. It's quite... I mean, we all, it's only 30, but in these early laning phases, on the first few minutes, that 30 can rock up a few times. It isn't too bad. And then at level 10, he's now got a 30% XP gain talent rather than 8 intelligence. So again, thinking about these more support positions, 30% XP gain is really significant. Definitely mm. feel like these two changes can swing Skyrath back into relevancy. Yeah, I agree. That's Position a lot of damage at level two between your yeah. Q and that concussive. Yeah. For sure, that's tons. I'd be scared to see Skyrafts in the offlane now. Yeah. And then getting an XP talent. Oof, yeah. I think... Which might, I don't, you probably do get that. So maybe I have to buy boots now because I would always just go the movement speed talent and just have five nulls. So. You get a win lace. You'd be fine. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. It's the same as the level 10 talent. Used to be plus twenty move speed. Yep. Uh, slight buff to Slardar base regen. Sven Stormhammer stun duration reduced. Uh, basically, it's just a, a tiny bit less. Point uh, three of a second less at level one. Not huge, although obviously not great for Storm. Uh, for Sven rather. Warcry mana cost increased from forty to sixty. That'll be felt because it Warcry is one of those spells that you do spam. Even when yeah. you're just roaming through the jungle, you press your war cry. Um, so Sven will perhaps feel that a bit. Um, he gets a mana regen talent, though, doesn't he, at 10? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he does. So probably he's fine. Super mining, yeah. Yeah. It's one of those where if you're farming and using war cry a lot, you're not using Stormhammer. So it's fine, really. Small change to both Timbersaw and Terrorblade. Uh, Timbersaw is never going to complain at base mana regen, even if it is a quarter of a point. Um, and that brings us to one of the more talked about changes, just because of how unnecessary it is. Tinker, so much of the machine's mana cost is a little bit less at level one through three. Um, but now Tinker has a 150 GPM talent at level 15 um, versus a movement speed talent. Uh, why 
is I think what a lot of people are thinking. Why has Tinker got a 150 GPM talent? I don't know what your th- your thoughts are on that. Thanks, I hate it. <laughs> that's what. I, yeah, that's why I think I I hate the hero. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. So yeah, that's the dirty hero. I just hope it doesn't show up. A yeah. non, a, well, a, a non independent thought. Simply a comment I saw online about how this GPM talent could mean that Tinker needs not farm as heavily in the mid game, therefore can be more active, involved with fighting, and give more space to any the rest of his allies. It is a fair point, quite an interesting point, but at the end of the day, it still means Tinker's in your game, so life is bad. <laughs> yeah. For if you're on his team or against him, like it's just unenjoyable either way in my eyes. Yeah. I hate playing with Tinker. I hate playing against Tinker. Yeah. I think maybe the GPM talent makes him more attractive as like a pub stomp hero. You get the E Blades and the Dagons a bit quicker, the Cypher Vices or whatever. But yeah, this hero is unenjoyable. I know no one hates Tinker more than Guest Nick as well. So <laughs> I'm sure he was shivering when he read these changes. Tinker's always banned in our games with Nick. So. Tree and Protector, he got slight buffs. Another base armor increased by one. There's been quite a few of those. That's that's welcome, particularly for a melee hero. Much more welcome because you're more often taking little beats from creep or enemies. Then, yeah. and I mean, Trien loves to be getting his fist fighting going in lanes, so very relevant to get armor increase. And then his overgrowth duration has gone up 0.25 at every level, so minor, but every little helps and... At level one, it's now a 3.5 second route. Mm. That's quite long to hold people in place. Mm. So I, I think he's a... I mean, I say I think he's a cool hero and I'd like to see him. My last memory of him is mainly on Nick. You have this monstrously useless free game. <laughs> it was like zero eighteen or something. I mean, we everyone got crushed, I believe, that game, but still sour memory. However, yeah. I think he's a cool hero. Wouldn't, wouldn't mind seeing him. Still has a ton of damage at level one with nature's guys slapping yeah. people for like a hundred or whatever. It's over plus, 100. Yeah, I think it's plus sixty level plus one. Plus sixty, yeah. It's really yeah. significant to hit people in the face with that. Light nerf to whirling damage, whirling axes damage on troll warlord. Tusk has had his movement speed increased by five. Underlord has his armor increased by one. Um, I'm by the way, I might have to play a bit of Underlord at some point because this hero is gets me places mmr wise undying fixed some bugs fine and soul rip max unit count reduced from 10 12 14 16 to 8 10 12 14 i don't really know what that even means soul rip heal damage from 18 22 26 30 to a bit more than that i think it's just a slight buff to soul rip meaning that you don't have to be as reliant on there being lots of units around to get the value out of Soul Rip because now you need fewer units to get the same heal right. or damage. I mean, I've not done the exact maps, but that's the idea of the count going down, but damage up. Mm. Vengeful Spirit Magic Missile cooldown reduced from 10 to 9. That's quite nice. Um, a second less on the stun. I mean, I know it's only 10%, but you'll take it. Uh, and then some touch-ups, fatal bonds, damage is a percent less. Um, and so is the talent. So 2%, I suppose, from level 10 onwards of a reduction to fatal bonds. That's probably, I don't know what your guys' thoughts on, but probably bigger than the 1% number makes it seem. Or the 2% number, I suppose, given that this is effectively Warlock's like ultimate spell, basically. Hmm. So and is it? It's it's many times over, isn't it? So it's a uh, because all the the bonded targets are damaging each other, so it's two percent less on each of them. I don't know. I didn't. I'm not don't know about maths, so I don't know <laughs> if I'm just talking rubbish. But I don't know what you're. I just it's still good. I I don't know what two percent makes that big of a difference. You yeah. were saying it's like 2% less for each target, so overall it's less than that? Is that what you're... No, no. I was just saying that 2% less, it's not just one 
target. It's not just yeah, one so target that's taking damage. Like all of the time, all of them are taking two. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, that's what I was oh, trying. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I still, still think it's like yeah. S tier so, spell. Yeah. Right, right. Oh, the general idea is not as potent, but it's still strong. The math, yeah. who knows? I did the math on the solar rip, and it's within four damage, so it's pretty much exactly the same. You just need less units around to get the full effect. So, oh, pretty good. good. Right. Okay. Geminate attack bonus damage has been buffed a bit. I forgot that was even a thing, to be honest. That was a recent change, right? Yeah. I'm not totally familiar with this. Is it just the second attack that gets bonus damage? Not yeah, the second attack does bonus damage, and I had somebody yesterday try it in a game against me, and they lost, but it was it did a lot of damage in lane. I mean, their build was just bad. They went quadruple Wraith Band, Agi Treads, and Diffusal, and um, then by the yeah. time the game ended, they had no Wraith Bands, so they basically wasted 2k gold, or like 1k gold. Right, yeah. But 55 damage is a lot. That's a lot of bonus damage on a Geminate attack. Mm. Not saying you would max it, but um, definitely think you get one point in the bugs, and then secondary max the Geminate, and especially when you get level 25, and if you go the third Geminate attack, then that's a lot, I feel like. A lot, mm. a lot. 55 twice, basically. Man, uh, I hate Position three weaver is one of my th most hated things. When I have a position three weaver on my team, the morale's out the window in the picking stage. Not a fan. Um, and that's fresh in the memory because I had one today. <laughs> um, any final thoughts on the patch? We've basically got through all of it. I want to try four acts. <laughs> And that's what we spent the most time on. I don't know if that was just because it was the first hero in the that we got to, or almost or certainly, what? yeah. I can get behind a four axe, that's for sure. And for yeah. four Skywrath, those are the two things I want to do. Yeah, I feel like next mini patch we should do it from the bottom up, so we actually spend like twenty minutes talking about Geminate attack damage and skip yeah. over axe at the end. Uh, give some love to some of these lower alphabet heroes, maybe. Um, oh, I want to yeah. try Undyne some more too. I mean, he's all, he's one of my favorite fives to play, but like, no one respects the level two soul rip, the decay soul rip, hmm. like so much damage. And now that you don't even need as many creeps, um, for the same amount of damage, I think it's really strong. It's like a hundred and seventy six damage nuke at level two. So, or like just at, and with one point in it, which is a lot. That's a mm. lot of damage. No, I totally agreed. That might be the most damaging spell at level one, I think. If you are, you know, if you... Do if you have, get it in the right situation. Yeah, because, well, you couldn't do that. Um, well, okay, does Soul Rip work with um, heroes? Do you know? Is it, or is it just creeps? I don't know. I actually because don't know. Before the max unit count was ten at level one, and the creep waves only have four each, right? At the beginning mm. of the game, so yeah. you actually couldn't max it, like max the damage out of it, unless mm. there were some jungle creeps around. But now it's went down from ten to eight, which is like the exact amount of two creep waves meeting at level one, which I think actually makes this the most damaging spell at level one. Yeah, I can't think of one that would be more. I can't work out what the total damage would be. Well, it was uh, it was Shadow Shaman Q, so oh, um, or or if, Rocket Barrage could be up there. Or if you consider like, oh uh, yeah, Rocket Barrage does do a lot. Disruptor Q, but it's like four instances with like you know they each get reduced, and then the region in between it kind of gets kind of iffy. But this is like one. What about yeah, instant what about cast point. How much does Double Edge do? No, that's one? pretty weak level one. 150, yeah. that's more than Aethershock. Mm. Aethershock's 140. I don't know, has that been nerfed or something? Yeah. I think Rocket Barrage, if you got a full Rocket Barrage on someone, or like Diabolic Edict, maybe that does more. Oh yeah, Edict's know. another one. These are, yeah, they're a little bit different. Like those yeah, they, aren't yeah, nukes are per se, yeah. right? They're, you have to be next to somebody or like, mm. Mm. whereas like a single cast point. Because Sol Rip's instance speed pretty much and then yeah that's actually a lot of damage 176 you imagine like two or three decays on somebody and you pop that out 
think many people live through that. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that's a secret buff. Or like a, we just did the math. We just looked, you have eight creeps, at, you know, in the early stage. There you go. Yeah. This is another, um, another Adam prophesizing the meta after his Abaddon shout. It's now going to be the Yeah, I don't think I'll ever, now. I'll ever have anything as good of, as pointing out the Abaddon. That was awesome. Yep. Uh, first of all, Marco, you, well, I guess we'll, we can wrap it up here. The listeners want to know whether or not Marco is using a walkie talkie as a microphone. <laughs> Is it one of those um, one of those Toys R Us walkie talkies that you can get a set of two for, <laughs> for like five quid or something? I wish Ten it was because that'd be fun. <laughs> You're talking into a tablet. No, I've got a plug. It's, I've got earphones plugged in rather than a mic plugged in. I actually, I, I honestly not... think your your audio will this ep- your audio for this episode will be better. I can already tell it'll be better than usual because your microphone that you use normally is is r- worse than this is it yeah well i don't know if it is in discord but it is when i edit because when i edit it's all there's no volume variance there's everything is so if you imagine the waveform of the classic audacity file everyone's mm-hmm. is like normal wavy normal sound yours are all exactly the same volume so whenever you talk it's just like a block and then you stop talking and the block ends so the volume is exactly the same the whole way through um and it ends up not sounding very good whereas your audio here maybe is lower quality but it's definitely volume is higher or lower or something anyway that's up for the listeners to decide when they actually get this episode on tuesday if there's any confusion well uh, Go on, what are you going to say? I was just going to say, it's always good to leave some uh, topical topic at the end of the pod to see which of the keen listeners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. who's made it this all the way the... if they raise a point about this weird audio conversation. These are the real, yeah. uh, you know, behind the scenes, the real juicy nuggets that people wait till the end to hear, I'm sure. For sure. you got to reward the listeners for getting to the end, for getting them some top, some top new meta uh, content. Um. What I was going to say is if there was if there's any confusion about which weeks we're doing the Tuesday episode and which ones are doing the Friday, we're doing them, this is a Tuesday week now, and the next Tuesday episode will be two weeks today, and that was swapped around because we basically did two Tuesday episodes in a row, so it, that effectively meant that the schedule swapped a week or whatever. Basically, so, Icefrog was being a nuisance and not sticking to our schedule when he released Exactly, Patch. yeah. Yeah, I had a word with him. It won't happen again. <laughs> so yeah, that's New Meta episode 28 and Dota 2 episode 7.22c. Thanks, listener, for joining us. Thanks, Marco and Adam, for joining me um, on this patch edition. We'll see you again on Friday, I hope. And until then, bye. Bye. See you later.